Hi there, and welcome to another epic science video lesson with Mr. Floyd. A lot has been going on these past few weeks due to the coronavirus pandemic, with the most notable being the fact that schools here in Pennsylvania are now closed for the year, the fact that the state of Pennsylvania is now under a stay-at-home order, and the fact that our country has come together to confront this virus in a way we haven't seen since World War II. We're essentially under a mandatory lockdown right now. And with the constant news media focus on the rising numbers of coronavirus cases, which are now well over one million, it is becoming more and more difficult to stay positive during these challenging times. We are the ones that can make a brighter day though. So I'm hopeful that my videos have been helping bring some positivity into your day during these scary times. With that being said, as I said in my sixth video lesson, I had been having trouble releasing a new video lesson every day due to the length of each video lesson and the fact that I've been trying to make them as perfect as possible. I've since introduced two new, more manageable daily science videos, SciFacts with Chef Flair D and Name That Species, also featuring yours truly to make sure that you still get your daily dose of science. I feel that both of these are working quite well, and they have given me the freedom to take my time when making these longer video lessons. It's hard to believe that it's already April though, and that we've almost been out of school for an entire month. I remember being quite unsure as to how to feel about all of this way back in early March when everything that's going on right now due to the coronavirus had just begun. Part of me felt that we as a society were overreacting, and I recall thinking to myself that I hadn't seen people overreact this much since that time I was in ninth grade and my friends and I watched a video of a botfly larva being removed from a cat. Oh my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah! Turn up. <laughs> yeah! Oh, oh my oh, god! god. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I was wrong though, and I am not afraid to admit that. The coronavirus is a very, very serious problem, and it has the potential to be one of the leading causes of death among Americans this year. That in itself is a very, very scary thought. We need to focus on staying positive through all of this though. And y'all came here for a video lesson, so let's get to the science. Being as though we are in the middle of this historic coronavirus pandemic, I think that I have the perfect thing for us to learn about today. Pandemics and how the current coronavirus pandemic compares to the worst pandemics of all time. So, get excited, since for today's video lesson, we are going to learn about the history of pandemics and just how the current coronavirus pandemic compares. Let's begin by reviewing something we learned a little bit about in our fifth video lesson, which was about why viruses are even called viruses. While going over the etymology of this term, 
we learned a little bit about the term epidemiology. Epidemiology is, at its simplest, the study of diseases and how they start, spread, are controlled, and affect the population of a given organism. Terms like endemic, epidemic, and pandemic are often used by epidemiologists to describe the prevalence of a disease. The word endemic describes a disease that is regularly found among a particular group of people or in a certain geographic area, but with a prevalence at a predictable, consistent level. A good example of this would be the prevalence of varicella, also known as chickenpox, right here in the USA, since this is a disease many American children get every year. The word epidemic is a bit different, for it describes the rapid spread of a disease to a large number of people in a given population within a short period of time. For example, if 10 times the normal amount of children in the United States suddenly got chickenpox, we would say that we have an epidemic in the United States for this disease. Pandemics are where things go global, though. For this term describes an epidemic disease that has spread across a large region, such as multiple continents, or worldwide, to now become prevalent across a very large geographical area. The best example for this would be the current coronavirus, for it started in Wuhan, China, as a local epidemic that began with a single case back in November, and then slowly spread across the globe, infecting millions in the process to become a pandemic. Just how bad is the current coronavirus pandemic, though, when compared to the many historical pandemics that have occurred throughout human history? Well, as of the writing of this, there have been well over 1 million confirmed cases worldwide of COVID-19, the disease the coronavirus causes. Most of these cases have now been in the United States as well. However, Hundreds of thousands of people who have had this disease have recovered from it, which is fortunately a lot more than the number of people who have died from this terrible disease. Numbers do not tell the entire picture, though, since some regions have better access to testing than others. They can, however, give us a springboard to compare this current pandemic to those of the past. There have been a lot of epidemics and pandemics throughout human history, and it would take several video lessons to cover each one in detail, but fortunately I found a great infographic to help us summarize some of the most significant. As I stated earlier, terrible pandemics have been afflicting human populations since the dawn of civilization. Some of the first few major recorded pandemics involved the plague and smallpox, and due to the severity of these diseases, these early plagues were some of the deadliest mankind has ever seen. The Antonine Plague and the Plague of Justinian, which both occurred in ancient Rome, served to be foreshadowing for the Black Death, also known as the bubonic plague, that, quite literally, plagued most of the entire world during the Middle Ages by killing approximately 200 million people. That is an incredible amount, especially considering that the total population of humans at that time was much lower than it is now. Note that the plague is not caused by a virus, though. It is actually caused by a type of bacteria called Yersinia pestis. This bacteria can be spread by infected fleas from animals like rats, or by exposure to the body fluids of dead, plague-infected animals such as rats or even humans. 
Spreading is exacerbated by poor hygiene conditions, something that was prevalent during this time. Symptoms of plague are very severe, and they consist of fever, chills, extreme weakness, digestive issues, bleeding from your mouth, nose, and skin, shock, and the blackening of tissues in your extremities, also known as gangrene, as the cells in the tissue die. The bubonic plague, aka the Black Death, is aptly named, for not only did this disease turn flesh black, but this pandemic still stands as being the darkest and most devastating in recorded human history. Note as well that the term bubonic, which comes from the medieval Latin word biubo, meaning a pustule, growth, or swelling, had a logical meaning as well, since this term describes the swollen lymph nodes, aka biubos, that typically develop in the first week after one becomes infected with the plague. Medical practices at the time were simply not advanced enough to properly deal with such a terrible disease, and as such, only the strong or lucky survived. Plague doctors, equipped with their miasma-blocking masks, used methods that had little to no basis in science to try and treat plague patients. They often targeted the buboes and used them as sites for blood letting and leeching with the goal of rebalancing the humors, but this had little to no effectiveness and usually just made things worse. As our infographic shows us though, several more plague-based pandemics would occur in the years after the Black Death, but fortunately none of these would end up being anywhere near as devastating as the Black Death. The second deadliest pandemic of all time, the smallpox pandemic, came close though, due to a virus we learned a lot about in our previous video lesson. The smallpox pandemic began during the Age of Discovery and would lead to over 50 million deaths as this pandemic devastated much of the world for centuries. Beginning with the European entry into the New World, smallpox, along with other pathogens such as the influenza virus, measles, and cholera, devastated the Native American people due to their immune systems not being prepared for such a threat. Smallpox was the primary killer though, with tens of millions dying due to this disease, which was far more than were killed in direct conquest. It is thought that some of these fatalities may even have been due to early forms of biological warfare as well. Pandemics due to the plague and due to smallpox have led to the most deaths when compared to other diseases, but as our infographic shows, the story of historical pandemics is not complete without mentioning the two other most devastating ones of all time, the Spanish flu and HIV AIDS. The Spanish flu has been getting a lot of attention lately due to the influenza virus's similarity to the coronavirus. This particular pandemic caused about 40 to 50 million deaths, making it another pandemic with a death count equal to a significant amount of the world's population during the time it occurred, which was during the years 1918 until 1920. Beginning during World War I, which itself was one of the deadliest times in human history, the Spanish flu pandemic holds the distinction of being the worst flu-based pandemic of all time. When this pandemic began, newspaper censorship 
involving stories about this pandemic was prevalent as a way of making sure morale towards World War I was maintained. However, after stories related to this disease's effects in then-neutral Spain were released, involving the illness of their king, King Alfonso XIII, concerns about this disease quickly spread and the name Spanish flu was coined due to the misconception that Spain was either the worst hit area or the area of origin, the latter still being unknown to this day. The influenza outbreaks that followed disproportionately killed healthy young adults. A major difference between the current coronavirus and the Spanish flu pandemic is just this. The fact that the Spanish flu pandemic targeted otherwise healthy young adults, whereas the coronavirus is mainly killing older individuals. This particular strain of influenza virus, which is the same H1N1 influenza virus that would cause the swine flu pandemic in 2009, was particularly deadly due to the possibility that this strain of virus triggered a cytokine storm, a tissue and organ ravaging overactivation of the immune system. Other factors such as crowded medical centers and poor hygiene likely contributed to many deaths as well. The Spanish flu pandemic often gets overlooked when discussing human history during the early 20th century due to it being sandwiched in between World War I and World War II. It cannot be stated enough how truly devastating this pandemic was. Finally, as our infographic shows us, the last major pandemic in terms of fatalities that humans have faced is the HIV-AIDS pandemic. HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and it can lead to a condition called AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, in which the human immune system is significantly weakened and thus more susceptible to allowing opportunistic infectious agents to cause severe disease upon gaining entry into a human's body. HIV is an example of a zoonotic virus in that it was transmitted to humans from other primates in the early 20th century in a process called zoonosis. It is thought that the current coronavirus has a similar origin due to the fact that some scientists have postulated that the coronavirus originated in bats. HIV AIDS has killed approximately 25 to 35 million people worldwide since it was declared a pandemic in the year 1981, and while the global Incidence rate has been falling for years thanks to improvements in medical procedures and lifestyle. This virus is still a major problem in many parts of our world, and it is still the leading cause of premature death in some areas. HIV is transmitted via certain bodily fluids, though making this virus a bit easier to avoid than others if the proper precautions are taken. However, the initial fear and lack of knowledge surrounding HIV caused a variety of social issues, with the story of Ryan White not being allowed to return to his school after his diagnosis standing as one of the most notable. Ryan White was a hemophiliac who contracted HIV after receiving an infected blood transfusion, and his story has become a well-known reminder of how society often irrationally fears what is not understood. To conclude, 
As our pandemic infographic shows us, compared to the many past pandemics, the coronavirus fortunately ranks closer to the bottom than the top when it comes to fatalities. However, it is important to maintain perspective and realize that this is likely due to the fact that our medical systems and world health practices have improved significantly and not due to the notion that the coronavirus is any less serious. Let us be thankful that we live in a time and a world in which this is the case. For the science-based thinking, methodologies, and data-driven practices in use today are what is hopefully going to keep this current coronavirus pandemic from turning into something much, much worse. Well, that's all I have to share with you today about pandemics and how the current coronavirus pandemic compares to the worst pandemics of all time. I thus hope you all learned something today about how common pandemics have been throughout human history, despite how uncommon this current coronavirus pandemic feels. Like I keep saying as well, we must keep learning through all of this. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's give some positivity to those around us by helping them learn as well. There are going to be a lot more of these video lessons in the coming days due to the nationwide school closures going on. So please subscribe to Chase Floyd Inc. and turn on notifications so you'll be able to see the next video lesson when it's released. While you're here, please check out all of my other great videos as well, such as my piano videos, and please share this video with any friends that you think might like it. It is going to be an interesting couple of weeks, months, we don't really know. So, you gotta use your time wisely and try to learn something new every single day. With that being said, bell or no bell, we still work. Bell to bell in Mr. Foy's class, even during crazy times like these. So, I hope you learned a lot today, and I'll see you all next time for another exciting video lesson. We are the ones that can make a brighter day though, so I'm hopeful that my videos are that my videos are helping bring positivity to your day during these scary times. We are the ones We are the ones that can make a brighter day though, just you and me. We are the ones that can make a brighter day though, just you and me. So I'm hopeful that my videos have been bringing some positivity to your day during these scary times. We are the ones that can make we are the ones that can make a we are the ones that can make a brighter day though just you and me so i'm hopeful that we are the ones that can make a brighter day though we are the ones that can make a brighter day though just you and me so i'm hopeful that my videos have been helping bring some positivity into your day during these scary times the candy bear can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Like I keep saying as well, we must keep learning through all of this. We are the ones who make a brighter day. We are the ones who what? Who make a brighter day. So let's start giving some positivity to everyone around us during these challenging times. Like I keep saying as well, we must keep learning through all of this. We are the ones who make a brighter day. Like I keep saying as well, we are the one. Like I keep saying as well, let's start giving some positivity to everyone around us during these challenging times. Like I keep saying as well, we must keep learning through all of this. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's give some positivity to those around us by helping them learn as well.